Fora TV. The world is thinking. For Toy Symphony, in some ways, what I'm happiest ab ab about with this project, in some ways, this was a surprise with Toy Symphony. A lot of the instruments were extremely attractive and fun, and a lot of toy companies. Uh, some toy companies like Fisher Price actually made toys out of them. Um, but it was a piece of software that's really caught on the most. And uh, my conviction in Toy Symphony was why shouldn't a little kid be able to make his or her own original music? You go into any preschool in the world, and for, for the visual world, uh, children aren't told to you know, imitate a photograph or to draw a chair. Little kids are given a table with materials on it. it might be crayons or paste or uh, interesting textures and scissors. And there might be a general project, but the child learns by exploring the materials with a, with a general goal. And in that way, learns everything you need to about uh, touch and putting things together and form. And then by the time a child's about seven or eight, the teacher starts saying, OK, let's draw a horse or let's draw a house. And not surprisingly, partly because of the request and partly because of that age, the creativity goes out the door pretty fast. Uh, it becomes a, a totally different kind of training. Um, so, and when I was a kid, my mom's a wonderful piano teacher. And um, I'm the oldest of three kids, so I was her guinea pig. And we'd have our piano lessons. And then after the piano lesson, she would say, um, OK, I'm going to give you all five minutes to go around the house. And I want each of you to find an object around the house that makes an interesting sound and come back. So we'd all run around, take, you know, find a lamp, uh, something from the kitchen, a uh, book, anything, come back. And she'd say, OK, let me hear what each of those sounds like. We'd each make the sound. OK, what's the loudest sound you can make with each of those? Ah, OK. What's the softest sound? What does it sound like if you do that one and that one at the same time? OK. That What's a word you could use to describe what that sounds like? Oh, that's interesting. And can we make a little story with those words? What might come first? How would you want to start this? And what would we do next? And in about 15 or 20 minutes, the four or five of us, you know, really little kids, would have made a piece with those objects that was usually pretty interesting. And then she'd say, OK, and for next week when you go home, why don't you make a picture? And um, then when we come back next week, we'll look at the picture. It'll, we'll be able to remember it and play it again. So in that one little exercise, we realized, first of all, that music wasn't just something in printed music written by dead composers who you'd never get to meet. It wasn't something where the system of the music was determined. The system came, comes from nature. It comes from the world, and human beings shape it the way they want. Music is something that everybody can make. There aren't only special people who can make music. And notation, the special language of music, which keeps many people from music, isn't anything more, really, than a, a way of remembering what you did so that you can do it again and maybe interpret it differently another time. So this was really liberating for me, and we tried to do the same thing. So we made something called HyperScore, which is software that uses line and color, a uh, very simple interface, to write sophisticated pieces of music. Um, so uh, you draw uh, little fragments of music first. Each fragment gets a color. And then you draw with those colors on a larger uh, screen. And all the rules of music are inside the software. So you can leave it exactly the way you want, um, making every gesture, every note, every sound very precise. But you can also say, I want some help with the harmonies or the rhythm so it fits together. Um, and, and that big blue line in the middle actually allows you to draw the way the harmony progresses. Um, so it's pretty sophisticated. Here's a little video on HyperScore. HyperScore is a computer program that gives children the power to compose. They only have to be able to draw a line. It allows you to compose a piece of music uh, without knowing anything about the rules of music or without knowing musical notation. Um, it uses a, a, a graphic language that we developed, uh, and you draw and paint on the screen, and your marks are turned into music. As children change the shape, length, color, and position of their lines, they create music. The software acts as a translator, taking the kids' designs and turning them into musical scores, the language of professional musicians. It all sounds impressive in theory. How does it sound in reality? Symphony has been a massive hit in Berlin, Dublin and Glasgow, 
with local children performing on stage with orchestras. There you can see two of the girls who were in, that was the BBC Symphony playing. We did a variety of Toy Symphony events in the UK. That was in Glasgow where we worked in a really tough inner city school environment with kids who'd never made music at all before. Um, and they ended up writing totally amazing pieces that were played by the BBC Symphony, broadcast on Radio 3, all around the world actually.